All right, Bonehawks, this video is all about the Bonehawk podcast. Sat down again for another week, going over the final combat. We sat through all the groups. I watched what I could of the LCQ. Kind of go over the fate of Mortal Kombat 1 and uh, where it's going, what it's doing right now, the whole Homelander business. So, yeah, before we get into our conversation, I just want to give a big shout out to everyone that supports me over on Patreon. If you're ever missing some of these podcasts, you can come and hang out in our Discord, which you can get access to for just a dollar. Link is in the description below. And you can chat. Usually me and Hater are in there getting salty over Street Fighter or something like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, your support is appreciated, and thank you to everyone uh, that's over there. So, that being said, let's get into it. <laughs> Accept your death. So, it felt like like just yesterday that MK1 launched and the pro competition began at ECT, East Coast Throwdown. And then through that, we've had all these regional qualifiers and combo breaker and all that kind of stuff. And it finally all boiled down to the final combat this weekend. Three days of watching people compete. And my goodness, there were ups, there were downs, they were all over the place. But uh, overall... Some, it was nice to see some good representation, I would say, from around the world. Truly felt like a world championship, you know? It is cool to see, like, what kind of characters and, and game plan, play style and stuff that you see some of these players bring to the table that we're not used to seeing, like, an NA or something, right? Yeah, and I, I remember some of them talking about that in their, like, player interviews, saying that, like, oh, you know, in the, in the West, they have a certain, like, certain meta, but, like, ours is different in, you know, Europe and the Middle East and that kind of thing. So it's kind of... It's kind of neat to see all that stuff clash. So, yeah, it gives everyone new ideas, you know. You know, and yeah, and we'll shake things up. Like, yeah, well, I don't want to get too far into it because uh, we got to get the comments here first. But we we're gonna talk on all of that stuff coming up today. So, starting out here with a comment from Pedals XOX. I think they should keep the float cancel into dash moves on the ground. They're hard as hell and are cool. He doesn't get good damage anyway, and it would cost two to three bars. For that optimal combo i think it should only cost meter in the air into another move so this is talking about homelander, homelander. and yeah. his uh his apparently glitched uh combo trials and to be honest i kind of don't disagree with this with this comment like doing the combos myself like they were almost a turn off by, by how difficult they were to you and the damage wasn't like super insane or anything but i think we were kind of touching on that before and then maybe it was you that said it uh that, you know, if we're going to let Homelander rock with that, then we should let Natara rock with that, right? Because she's yeah. got the same kind of thing. And I don't think she does ridiculous damage with hers either that I'm aware of. Let it all rock. Let it get as silly as possible because it's all just going to boil down to like what we already just saw this weekend, which is just going to be. <laughs> right. There are teams that are inevitably going to rise to the top. That's just like what it's going to be. So who cares how silly it is? Right, Cyrax so completely unintended, and we saw him over and over and over again this weekend. Yep. But that wouldn't have changed, uh, you know, some of the other more prominent teams we'll talk we'll talk about. That's, but, I that's mean, people true. already know. I'm not even sure how seriously NRS takes this game beyond making like this kind of fun competitive sort of season. But as far as like balance and and things like that from a competitive perspective, obviously there's a way larger casual casual fan base to to appeal to, but at this point, I just say, fuck it. Let everything rock. Just let it rock. How, right? how would it be? What, what do you think Natara would look like with no, without spending bar on any extra flight candles? I really don't know enough about the character to, to speculate on that. All I know is I haven't really seen much of her at all. Like, like in, especially in high competition, outside of Sonic Fox picking her in one game at Combo Breaker. That was... Like, there's no Natara specialist that I can think of. The only one I can ever think of seeing was Deoxys, but that was... He stopped playing. He doesn't even play ACT. the game anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. He I doesn't mean, even play the game anymore. So apologies if I'm forgetting anyone, but uh, it would be cool to see. I want to see like good representation and I want to see like some crazy characters in, in top eights and top 16s and all that kind of stuff. Right. I think if we had at least one more defensive mechanic, like a push block or, or like something else, things could just get way silly, sillier. All it would do is enable the escalation of all, which is just happening anyway. Right. We just saw a bunch happen by accident, assumedly. And, you know, it's just going to shake up to, to be whatever it's it's going to be. And in the end, it's just going to be Johnny Cage Chameleon anyway. Like, <laughs> who cares what's happening with Cyrax? Yeah. Like, yeah. Thanks for I, that comment. I appreciate that. I, yeah. I mean, I definitely agree with you on that point. So we'll see. 
We'll see if NRS thinks the thinks the same way here. So uh, June Peach says agreed. Love the idea of Mortal Kombat. Love what it is. I find it hard to get back and enjoy the game more than five fights a month, maybe. And I do have to, I wanted to make a comment in regards to this because I haven't really posted much content because it's been really hard to play this version of the game. Like when it came out and we saw all the things that were happening, like at first it was kind of like, oh man, how can NRS do this? Ha ha ha. And then it's like, I can't play any casual games or ranked matches without people trying to do this piss easy Homelander Infinite on me. And it's like, this is going to be like this for a whole week. <laughs> so it just... It just turned me off on the game completely to the point where I I didn't want to play it. I didn't want to grind it. I haven't even played Quan Chi in like three days because I'm just, you know, I'll, I just, every time I get on, it's a negative experience. So it's, uh, I do apologize for lack of content. It's just turned me off on the game more than I have since I think the game's release. Maybe, maybe around the desync issue time, but I even don't remember like not wanting to play it as much as, uh, as I have now than you know, somebody doing the, the world's easiest infinite and then rocket teabagging me, you know, it's just not a, not a fantastic experience. And like, you can play sets with friends and all that kind of stuff. Sure. But like, I still do want to climb the ranks of combat league and get like the rewards. And to do that, you have to play random people. And unfortunately these random people are doing this to get to the top, to get to the rewards. So I almost thought about being like, fuck it, let's join them and just start <laughs> fucking kicking people in the head. But I, I didn't. I took the moral route. You rat bastard. Yeah, it, it yeah. Was... <laughs> you're better than that. Yeah, that is unfortunate. We talked about that a little bit last week, right? They just can't seem to get out of their own way sometimes, right? Yeah. They're always tripping over their own dongs. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't know what's going on over there or what the... Uh, is there light at the end of the tunnel? And is if there is, is it a pinhole or is it more like grapefruit sized? What do you, what do you think? I... <laughs> I really, I don't know how much I have left in the, in the optimism department, to be honest. Like, I, I, as long as we don't have anything as stupid as this infinite, then I'll be, I'll be a-okay, I, I think. But who knows? Every time they fix something, something else goes wrong. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Part of me is like, how can it be worse? And then it's like, why would you even fucking say that? <laughs> like, they'll find a way. They'll find a way. But it, I, at the end of the day, I still am a Mortal Kombat fan. It's, uh, it is, it is nice when I saw like Ed Boone and Tyler at the, uh, the final combat, like getting involved in the competitive community. That's cool. So they do care about the game and, and the player base, but man, they Ed to... Boone's smiling just cause he has so much money in his bank account. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm kidding. He <laughs> seems like a genuinely authentically like great dude, like would love to have like a, like a candid beer with him without even talking about Mortal Kombat. Right. Just like somebody that you just ran into with like, not even knowing like who he is. He seems like a real, a real cool dude. Yeah. The conversations I've had with him over the years have been nothing but positive. Uh, I mean, he just seems like he likes to one. laugh. That's why he likes to fuck with people. Like, and why he's always smiling. He just, you know, likes oh, to laugh man. and he likes to mess with people. And I think that's funny. I like people that are like that. He's such a troll. He's such a man. troll. I, I love that about him. He's a, uh, he's great. So uh, he's like putting whoopee cushions on your chair in the office and stuff. Right. And peeking around the corner, you can hear him like giggling before <laughs> giggling they away. even sit down. They're like, Oh, here we go again. Everyone pretend that you didn't notice. Right. Let Ed have his moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That would be so funny. If like someone candidly came out and was like, yeah, he's, he's like, to put whoopee you know cushions. With the guy behind the tree, licking his lips and rubbing his hands together, you know, with <laughs> the, the yellow waiting. jacket that that's Ed Boone waiting for someone to sit on his whoopee <laughs> cushion. Oh, the they're going to do it. People voting on those polls. Did they catch? it i said babality <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's uh I'm, i've been meaning to catch up with him to have a, a shijinko conversation with him since no one else is playing that cameo just kind of get his thoughts on that cameo i haven't i wasn't able to a combo burger even though i was sitting like one seat away from him the guy between us was so awkward though so sorry if you're listening yeah. to this dude he was just he just he just sat there like stiff as a board did not move like an inch the entire time i was almost like I almost thought maybe a cadaver was sitting next to me, or maybe it was someone. Maybe, that... he, has, maybe, maybe he has a condition, Dink. I don't know. I never know. Maybe it's maybe someone he that has was... a condition, and you're being unreasonable right now. I like to think that it was someone who was such a big fan of mine that was just frozen in spot mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah, right. they were so intimidated by my presence. No, the guy just had to pee so bad, but didn't want to like bother anybody, so he was just holding it and had to concentrate. Right, like being in the theater or on an airplane or something. That's exactly why I make like four trips to the bathroom before I board my flights. <laughs> I do not want to be. Bro, there. that's why I never have the window seat. I all the way, baby. See, T mile seat. See, I like the window seat because I can kind of just like 
make it like a little cave, like face away from everybody. I'm just kind of playing my switch or whatever. I don't like to be yeah. in the aisle getting like hit by people's shoulders as they're walking by. Yeah, the like I'm getting people's big booty ass cheeks rubbing up against your fa face cheek as they, they go by and they gotta, you know, yeah. it's the fight club thing. All the time, right? I give them the crotch side or the ass side when I walk past. <laughs> yeah, them. totally, right? So, what do uh, you do? Do you give people the ass or the crotch? I don't remember the last time I got off on an airplane. I cannot lie. You were just flew to Combo Breaker, and I didn't get up on either flight. <laughs> but even to get off the flight, you didn't have to step in front of anybody at any time. No, I'm always because I always take the window seat. I'm always the last one yeah. out of the aisle. <laughs> See? No, but okay, okay. There was there was on the flight back where I had asked two people to move, and then I s snuck in, but they, they went out of the way. Oh, so. oh, did you give them the ass or the crotch? I, I, that, <laughs> what am I? How you do seem you... like an ass man. I think, yeah, I think you gave him the ass dink. If I'm trying to get into the window seat, <laughs> how awkward would it be for me to give the crotch side first? Like I'm, <laughs> like I have to do a full three sixty at the end to sit it, down. Yeah, you do a little fuck? twirl at the end. That's your like victory. <laughs> your you know your victory round before you sit down. Oh my god, I feel okay. I Dink feel the like... confirmed ass man. Uh, do we have any more comments? That uh, really got off topic. Yeah, thanks for that, Peach. I uh, we, we definitely went uh, a different direction. Yeah, and that's that, exactly but... why Homelander's flight canceled didn't cost <laughs> meter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, final uh, final comment here by Timothy Washington, 583. Uh, Chameleon is way too strong. Normally, I wouldn't correct spelling, um, but in this case, it does matter because Chameleon spelt with a C, as Timothy has spelt, is actually the male presenting version of this character, and then Chameleon with a K is the female. Probably I'm gonna I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and give this individual the benefit of the doubt and say they were on their mobile device and it auto correct auto correct yeah that's kind of what I, happens to me all the time when I try and talk about this cameo but you are right and I think everyone and their dog probably agrees with you that this cameo is a problem and uh, yeah kind of kind of dominates can just kind of do everything and probably things that actually shouldn't do um, so. I think that's kind of a good segue into the final combat weekend uh, because we saw a metric fuck ton of this cameo. Like, I think it was almost in every set. Yeah, Aziz posted those stats. So from the the yesterday stream, the Saturday stream for groups, there was like 149 or 146 streamed matches. And of those 146 matches 136 of those had one or two chameleons yeah that's insane <laughs> that's actually insane every single match besides 10 out of 140 whatever so and i mean we know uh, i'm just sick of listening to that goddamn glaive sound effect i was talking <laughs> to you about that yesterday right yeah. like that's my biggest beef with the cameo right now i'm just man it's all i've been listening to all weekend watching this stream is fucking glaive and that goddamn pole throw. So the swing, swing, and ding, 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 yeah. ding. He's doing like the, yeah, no, I'm, I'm sick of that too. So I'm hoping only another day or so of hearing that constantly, because they were vocal about saying that they were making some changes to Homelander and the, some of the game things. If they don't address... Did they say they were making other changes? Or was it just the Homelander fix? Oh, you're talking about the tweet they made before Final Combat, before. saying like we're aware of the Homelander thing and the Cyrax, and the Cyrax thing, thing, and right. and, and we'll let you know. I mean, we're just like I know you guys have been like panicking for like four days, and we're finally going to say something about it just to tell you we're not doing anything about it. So, but just <laughs> right. so you know, we know. So stop telling us. You know now yeah. that tweet is it, that the one. That's exactly the one. Okay. I'm okay. Say, so. Yeah. Okay. So I would imagine that because this is kind of an extra one, what we'll probably see, like, probably Tuesday-ish, is, like, a fix for the Homelander Infinite and then the Cyrax thing, whether they're going to keep it or adjust it, whatever. Um, and then I, I bet they'll do something in the middle, right? The cooldown's not going to be as bad as it was, but it, not they're gonna not going to leave it like it is now. No, I don't think so. And... I think when we will see some big changes, like for Chameleon stuff, will be when Fair is launching, which I don't know if they have a date. I thought it said sometime in June, but we're halfway through, so not really sure. Do they release balance updates with the cameo patches, or is that just with the DLC character, no, the roster characters? I think they've done it. They've done it for both before. It's, have they? Uh, okay. Yeah, it's just a timing thing more than anything. I think so. 
but we'll see. That would be my guess is this week we get a fix for Homelander and uh, and Cyrax if they choose to fix Cyrax. Uh, and I do want to do want to mention real quick. I think it was Ketchup that tweeted out saying that there wasn't a Cyrax in top eight, uh, even though Nicholas I think did use Raid and Cyrax at one point to qualify for top eight. Um, to qualify, but not actually in top but eight. Not no in Barack top eight. Cyrax. I don't. Th- I think we, th- I thought we did see some Baraka Cyrax, but um, that Cyrax certainly wasn't the cameo of pick for that day, though. So I mean, no, it no. Uh, far and away wasn't. So I mean, way less Janet Cage than I was expecting too in top eight. Yeah, or even like in groups and stuff. Because I, outside of that, like she's everywhere. I just could not believe how little we saw of her. Where um, I do remember seeing a lot of Cyrax when I was watching the LCQ. And I do want to. We would have saw more Janet if Cyrax wasn't in the picture. I think. I think you're right. He. Um, I do want to kind of talk about LCQ a bit because there were some very interesting mashups and things that that happened. Like I'm looking at the the top 24. Wait, wait, wait. Before we go full sir, if you don't mind, right? Before we go to the beginning LCQ, can we talk about the elephant in the room? Like what actually happened, Grandfather? We're talking about chameleon stuff anyway, and I know people are dying to know what Dark Dink's opinion is on the current Mortal Kombat meta at the end of, like, season one here. Like, the, the kind of stuff that we saw today. So you have an opinion on that? Have you been in touch with that dude? Let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can grab him real can quick. You get him on the horn or something? Or maybe me, he's uh, in, in the bathroom? Give me, uh, give me, give me just a second. I'll see here. Okay. So, okay. So he is not available, but he did... Uh, have an official statement. He's not he, available. He would. He would like to make an <laughs> official a statement, statement prepared. Statement prepared. <laughs> okay. So uh, okay, I'll play. I'll play that for you here. So uh, okay. The actual peak of Mortal Kombat One gameplay is what we saw in Top Eight, with just the most difficult cameo to use in Chameleon. Is all I'm going to say. With a couple of the hardest characters to use in Johnny Cage and Peacemaker. This, Reach, brother. this is peak Mortal Kombat. This is what people traveled around the world to come and play against and ultimately lose to. And some people won. But that is the current state of Mortal Kombat 1. All right. So, All right. So, I mean, Peacemaker, Johnny Cage, Chameleon. I mean, I'm not sure I would say that's... I guess, that's, I guess technically it is peak because... It was on the, it was all the fucking top eight oh, was, <laughs> bro. Every Johnny mirror match, I was like, please, for the love of God, can I see Peacemaker? Then every Peacemaker mirror match, please, like I know I don't want Johnny, but literally anything besides this, right? I can't handle two of them. No, one Peacemaker, okay. Zero Johnny's okay. One Peacemaker, okay. Uh, man, I'm mentally fatigued after watching a lot of that. It was just a long weekend, so much gameplay. And DreamHack was happening in Sweden, so if you watch other fighting games, there was a lot of things competing for your attention. Oh, I didn't even see that was happening, uh, so yeah. Plus, Red Bull had a big Elden Ring event in Berlin, and there was a lot of streams going on, so if you're also like into Soul stuff, you had that competing for your attention, so... Busy weekend. Uh, yeah, there's a lot happening this weekend. Yeah, so... I... So LCQ... Yeah, LCQ. So yeah, so we, we've touched a little bit on top eight. Let's go back to, to LCQ. So the last chance qualifier, of course, there were so many names in here that could have taken the spot that would have done well. Gurr, Sunio, um, the one that I was personally hoping for, uh, STB competitor, of course, my teammate, my boy. Um, and then, of course, I wanted was hoping for Gambler as well because of the Gambler. absolute robbery that happened at Combo Breaker. So... Honeybee as well was there, right? That's kind of like in his backyard. So he was there on uh, Friday and then streaming from home like later that day or the next day. Uh, That would have been cool to see him win. There's so many crazy names that like, it's just like, how were they not even in the group stages? Like, like Pulse is in here. Uh, We got Hayate. We got uh, Conqueror from Brazil. Like that was that was just a stacked bracket, and out of all of it, it was uh, Gee Exceptional ended up winning it with Ashra, which uh, I had think I've seen his name around here and there, but not familiar with him at all. But the way that he played, he was just he was so good, and you can see he was just in the zone when he was in there, making all his conversions and everything like that. It was uh, it's something something about Ashra players, like when they lock in, and it's like. 
really clean gameplay. I just, I don't know. I like watching her. Like, she's obviously a very good character. I wouldn't be mad at seeing as much Ashra as we have Johnny and stuff. Totally. Um, <laughs> and if she doesn't get any changes, I wouldn't, wouldn't, if, if Johnny and Peacemaker get nerfed, I wouldn't be surprised if she's the next Johnny Peacemaker, <laughs> to be honest. She's been, like, flirting with that, like, best character in the game thing since the game came out, so... She's uh, super solid. Yeah, I feel it. she's got a little bit of a higher skill ceiling to take advantage of things than Peacemaker. Johnny, maybe to a degree. Peacemaker, especially, uh, he's just like one of the most basic characters in the game, but you could actually play him really technically, as we saw, like Mighty and Just always showcases that. And yeah, his brother, El Kakui, Ninja Killer, we saw his very, like, very straightforward Peacemaker, and there was a lot of Ninja Killer fans but heard about not seeing a lot of Liu Kang, and maybe rightfully so. Maybe that's why they follow Ninja Killer. Yeah, I mean, um, that'd be like me. Like, but he believes in Peacemaker, at least for those matchups. But, like, who knows what goes through their heads? I mean, when you're pay playing for $70,000 and a piece of $200,000, you just, you do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? So I can't really hate, but I, I understand why fans would be upset with something like that. Like if I abandoned Quan Chi or something like that, or Shu Jinko for that matter at this point in the game. So I think um, if you've historically played Mortal or NRS games uh, competitively, and in the meantime, you've fallen into content creation, the payday that you get from that just far exceeds even winning. Like even if you got top eight, if you didn't like win the whole thing, and then even then that might just be your sub count for the weekend. Right. Um, yeah. So I think that's why you don't see a lot of, a lot of people uh, traveling for that sort of stuff anymore. And the, the ones that we do see, did you see any major, you see any content creators in top eight? Well, honeybee could have been in there. I mean, uh, that was his comment, right back to content creator mode, right? Yeah. Uh, that, that's my yeah. stick for the competitive stuff. Yeah, no, that's, uh, I mean, Sonic Fox has a YouTube channel and they stream and that kind of a thing, but I will, I'm not, I don't know if I'd say, if, I guess they are a content creator. I'm not really sure. So I'm, I mean, an editor that uploads, I'm not discounting anyone here, right? But it's right. not like big, long, like edited tutorials and stuff. It's like ranked gameplay and they stream like, Half the time you tune into a Sonic Fox stream, actually more than half the time, probably like 98% of the time, the mic's not even on. But it's like people that want to see one of the best fighting game players in the world play, right? They're yep. streaming. They just have it on. They want to see it. And that's, you know. Yeah. So it's a different sort of thing. But yeah, I'm sure that Sonic Fox absolutely has a YouTube and Twitch income. Like, no, no doubt. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, so yeah, so Geek Exceptional won uh, the LCQ, taking over Gur. I love Gur. Right. Um, well, well played though, all the way to the end. Then we got the group stages here as well. So group stage one, uh, two, three, and four. The first one was was stacked, and there was this, uh, people. People were saying that they didn't think that these were made evenly, but I thought that they were kind of done by the by the point system. That was my understanding: is that they didn't do it randomly; they did it by the points. So, like top four points all ended up being like the first players of their group, and then you know. Five through, uh, five through nine, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> oh, I can count. <laughs> well right, done. So five through eight. Those are the seconds in each group, you know, and so on and so forth. That was how it was explained to me. I don't know if that's right. What was what was curious to me was how they did the regional winners, like how they ranked the regional winners. Like, was that done by like the more entrance the tournament had, the more points it's worth, or? I'm not really sure how they did that. I, I, I could be missing something completely or just that, yeah, however many points they won from that event and that's just where they get put. Uh, I'm not sure. Capcom Cup was for $1 million and they had a similar format and they did it all randomized. So people, just, if it wasn't completely random, some people are all for it being just random to make it truly like there could be no bias, right? It just, however the chips settle. That's what Capcom did. And it was not the biggest name that won a million dollars, but that's like people's points, right? Is because of seeding and, you know, things like that. That's why we always see the same people at the top. Yeah. But then just if creates. you don't do that, then you lose like, why do you like you want the, the two best players in in the region to be facing each other round one in pools? Uh, but I mean, if that's the rant, if you, if you think that's I'm not saying like either way, right? But that's the sort of they do that to avoid that sort of stuff. But it does kind of turn into... Yeah. Almost like a club of people that especially benefit from that, like the buys and stuff from it, right? Yeah, and I think that seeding should be. I've always kind of thought seeding should be more regional than than 
you know, by points system, that kind of thing. You I'm, don't want training partners playing against each other in like round one. Round one, one you know? no, that's stupid, right. you know? Yeah. So, like, I think, like, seeing kind of that aspect and then then uh, let just let it go, let it go. The best person's going to win at the end of the day anyway. So, I mean, it's not, uh, that's a, that's, those are decisions far bigger than what I can make. So, anyways, in the um, big upset in the first group with Tekken Master not making it out, uh, I had him and Sonic Fox making it out. And then Face Cell Combat, the princess story of this whole event, man. I was a, I was so upset at Tekken Master for making me watch Baraka Cyrex again. I didn't even care <laughs> that he didn't make it out. No, I'm kidding. That is kind of like tragic, right? But Face like earned it, earned it. 100%. Like, yeah, that katana play was clean. I kind of wanted him to take the whole thing. By the time we were like in top eight and stuff today, he's kind of who I was rooting for. <laughs> me too. Uh, totally. Yeah, the whole way through top eight, I was like, I want Face all to get to get all the way through and like playing katana and then they switched to peacemaker but i mean if you can't well beat them, what does katana kind of do thing. against peacemaker yeah. what does katana do against peace someone like when you're the weighted value of your character right so there's plenty of projectiles in the game but when you're a character like katana and like let's say like 85 percent of your character's value is a projectile a trap that counts as a projectile or whatever and you have a character that with no cooldown or whatever they just need the frames to start it up to completely take your game plan like most of your character's strengths right out of the just the equation that's frustrating that's way harder on katana than it is other projectile characters probably i don't know what do you think about that from a quan perspective uh i would probably agree with you i think like i mean katana probably has like some good i i'm not a katana player at all i'm just seeing i mean she's I, got like the best mid in the game and stuff she right she does but, have the best mid in the game uh, <laughs> so it's like the, that's like you know in combination with all of her other stuff yeah it's definitely like not her i don't think that's not like, her big selling point that's I don't like think the frosting that's on the cake exactly yeah i think that she has like some crazy cameo stuff like i've seen of course retro with katana jacks doing that those 100 percent corner combos where you have like one little tiny window to make one of four different guesses to get out correctly or else you're back into it so she definitely has how many of those sequences start off a projectile i would not know are most of them off strings and stuff I in which like, case my point might be kind of moot or whatever yeah like combo uh, like combo into it into the corner kind of a thing and then you have to guess or delay wake up or armor or jump depending on the setup. I just assume I just assume that's why they hopped a peacemaker as like just kind of a reliable second secondary right or it was less about him playing peacemaker and more of like I think this is a bad matchup for Katana so I'm just not going to play her. And I think that kind of got into their head a little bit because there was a couple times where they went down like oh and two switched to Katana and then made the comeback right or went down mm -hmm. one switched to Katana like just didn't and that's where like bad matchups can kind of mess with your head a little bit because chances are if you play like an odd character like katana for example um you're gonna know that matchup better than the other person does you know like you can grind matchups right. and that kind of a thing all you want like even like i saw sonic fox asking retro for games before the event knowing that uh you know face out probably be in their path so well, and then actually yep. gave retro a shout out afterwards like thank yep. you when he won so uh yeah but you know, so he switches to Katana on game three and then wins, but would he have won with Katana from the very beginning? Or is it like resistance training, well, right? Exactly you run with right. sandbags on your ankles, but then as soon as you take them off, you feel lighter, right? Because you're literally lighter, the sandbags are off. And even though you've been running and you're tired, you still have the momentum, maybe even more, right? Because there's less resistance there maybe that's the kind of like energy right like okay this is what i'm looking for uh now that i've experienced this poorly with this other character now that i'm like still in the thick of it not in a fresh match but in the thick of a match that's already got layers and things like that switch back to katana you know and you know do your thing where you're, he's clearly more comfortable right. right yeah no and i mean you get in your old head sometimes and you're like oh this is a bad matchup and then you know, I switched to something else, and you... I'll usually, unless it's a matchup I know is, like, 8-2 or something like that, I'll usually start it off just to see how well this person knows the matchup, whoever I'm playing. I'm just like, okay, like, this is this is when I'm really don't know this, I'm getting away with this, blah, blah, blah. But if I just get absolutely decimated or something, and I have a secondary on deck, that's when I'm going to pull that out and be like, okay, well, that didn't, that didn't go very well. Let's try something else, you know? Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Um, anyways, let's so... just... 
Are we talking LCQ still, or are we moving on to groups? We're on to the groups. So next group was Nikolas, Video Games, Yo, Wise, Jet, my, man. I didn't actually think Wise was going to pick Havoc, to be honest. I thought we were going to see some Liu Kang, which we saw a little bit of Liu Kang, to be fair. But I will say, very good job repping that Havoc. Uh, did some really cool things that I didn't know Havoc was capable of, and saw a lot more tether than I thought I would. He's definitely one of the premier Havoc players, and if you ever catch him streaming, you'll get the scene working on those crispy setups and stuff, and it's cool. I think he just kind of said fuck it and decided to go Havoc. Like, damn, the the consequences are, like, what's happening. Like, you know, be that guy, the champion of my character, like, sort of thing, and, you know. Did well, he though. He was the only one there playing Havoc, too, you know? Yeah, third in, uh, third in his group. Almost made it out. Unfortunate. Yeah, it was uh, really close, but video game. This was a tough. This was a tough group to call. Like video game. Video Joe. game Joe on that day, group day had like some of the cleanest gameplay of the entire weekend, in my opinion. I agree. That kid is a monster. Yeah, he's he's super good, and the amount of different teams he can play like is just insane. From super meta stuff like Barack Cyrax to like Shang Tsung to like I don't know. It's it's. I love to see someone that. Um, and of course the, sh the Shao as well. So someone who's so well versed in so many different play styles, it was uh, made a fun, fun weekend having VGY in there. Yeah, he's good. So he made it out of his group, and who else? Oh, Scorpion Prox, right? Nicholas. Or Nicholas. Nicholas. Uh, that's out of that group, and then the next one we had, yeah, Ninja Killer, Mighty Unjust, Zeus, Brosif. Oh man, I can't wait. To and Macron, Brosif, uh, was so hype. I missed like three of Brosif's matches out of the four that he had to play. And I caught the last one, which if you remember correctly, was like, if Zeus won, he would be the one getting out of the pool. And if Zeus lost, then Mighty and Just would be the one getting out of the pool. And either way, it didn't really matter for Brosif. <laughs> He's just there to play. Yeah, he He's was not the gatekeeper. Out. He held the key. What a Quan Chi thing to do, right? <laughs> like, just be like, you have to beat me if you want to move on. Uh, it was mighty, mighty unjust. Fate was in Brosif's hands. Totally, yeah. Brosif just uh, controlled that with some really cool combos um, into Janet. I was very impressed. I love those Janet combos. Those he was so doing sick. sick, like Janet stuff into jumping two one or something into sky drop, like some really cool combos I'd never seen before. Yeah, it was uh, the creativity was was through the roof, and just his portal usage. Like that's one thing that I've been trying to do, but I, it's it always strays from me is to like always have one of those meter burn portals on the screen because they just last for so long. And Brosif just like nailed it in my head why you want to do that because there were so many different times where you know gameplay is just happening and oh there's a portal creeping in and then it's still yep. here all these frames later and then he Man. ends up using it. So Ketchup's a Quan player, right? And even them. So I, it wasn't, I don't know if it was on, uh, I don't remember what, obviously they were commenting and they were talking about Brosov. They were to just, he's like, when even Ketchup's like, oh my God, there's so much stuff on the screen. What's going on? Yeah. It's like, you play this character, bro. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, he knows what's going on, right? But even when he's got to say something, you got a, a bone dome, plus you got cameos on the screen, plus you have two portals on the screen, plus you have projectiles on route or whatever it yeah. is, like almost sensory overload. Like what is, what is even, how, what do I do besides just hold the block button or, you yeah. know, follow my intu intuition and take like a really big, big risk. Yeah, it was, uh, it was super cool. And like um, some of the things like throwing out the tentacle uh, in the armor, and then you just instinctively want to punish him. He's just like, psych, haha, one, three. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Things like that were just, they were just great. I, I am a big fan of Brosif. He was my favorite player to watch all weekend, even though I only saw one of his matches. <laughs> so Aww. big shout outs to you, Brosif. You have to go catch the VOD to see, to see the rest. It'll be worth watching. I it was impossible to watch everything. They streamed for like 10 or 12 hours or something. That took for forever. And like I said, there were so many other competing things. Uh, it was impossible to watch everything that happened. Yeah, and then in my opinion, um, off that topic, real quick, I just want to make an official declaration as the Quan Father, the Bros of being in this group, solidifies him as the current best Quan Chi in the world. 
So, yeah, yeah. So I don't care your uncle, Uncle Ken, who uh, lives two towns over, who knows a couple cool combos. He's not the best Quan Chi player. It's Brosif. So it's official because now I have given you the crown. You've deemed it. You've sired him. I've sired him. Maybe if I can win. Do you Evo, think he I'll knows who back. you are? I like to think so. Do you think if someone said Quan Father in front of him, he'd be like, what? Quan, what? He'd be like, oh, no one's ever called me that before, but I'll take I it. I know, right? All about <laughs> flattering. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'll, hopefully I run into him in an event one day, but we'll see. Uh, so moving on to the final group now that I got my Quan Chi gushing out of the way here. Uh, we have Scorpion Prox, Zombat, Kanimani, The Exceptional, and Mikalu. And um, the exceptional uh, seemed definitely not playing as strong as he was in the LCQ bracket. And I don't know if the nerves are, are different for the group stages or whatnot. I'd imagine they probably would be. Um, but also some super strong players in this bracket as well. And the only one that ended in a three-way tie of three ones, three ones, three ones with Connie Mani, Zombat, and Scorpion Prox. So that was really interesting. And then they had to go to the game differentials or whatever, which I was kind of confused. Yeah, they had to go to round wins and losses or something, right? Yeah. Is that what they did? I think it, I don't know if it was rounds or games, but whoever played the most games or had like the most rounds won or something, I'm not sure. Ended up now, for that. those that don't know, Connie Monty is a favorite around the Dink Discord because when we watch Rips Arena, it sounds like he's saying Kami Mommy, or that's how Dink <laughs> understood it the first time. Right. Uh, so we're always talking about Kami Mommy. Um, we love seeing him on that's, stream. That's funny because, yeah, as we were watching this group, we're in the Discord and ba -ding, Like, hello. <laughs> like, hey, loot. Uh, uh, we're just uh, was about, it loot? Uh, yeah, loot. We're, shout outs to loot. We're like, it was, I was like, I'm cheering for, for your boy. Right, I'm cheering for your boy right now. He's like, yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> so that was cool. I haven't, uh, I, I, I miss loot. Comes around not as much anymore, but... Of course, had to uh, point out, which I will as well, the lack of Kenji in the finals. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean. I didn't get it from all of his passive-aggressive tweeting the last couple of days. <laughs> yeah, if you follow him on Twitter, he's, uh, it's basically all he was talking about. So, so it is what it is. And then we were saying that the thing with Kenji is that Kenji is, in my opinion, Kenji's just a terrible design. He's just poorly done. I'd like to see him completely reworked. Um, Kenshi has an on switch and an off switch and when the on switch is on and it works he's the best character in the game but when the switch is in off he's just the middest mid tier like lacking things that other perfectly mid tier characters have there's got to be somewhere in the middle you think yeah like the thing with, him, with the thing that uh, Lou was saying is that all of Kenshi's bad matchups are the top tier characters. So you're never going to get to the final stage of an event because someone's always playing those. Like um, the first time I saw Sunio do it, I was like, what the hell is that? And like Peacemaker can use his eagly thing any point in Kenshi's pressure, whether you can armor or whatever to call eagly into attack Sento and then bam, pressure's over. Like, and I was like, wow, that's breaks the main thing he's supposed to do. <laughs> well, we were just talking about with like projectiles and stuff earlier right and kenji's been putting up with stuff like that for a while because the scorpion camo cameo the the flame breath the up flame breath even though it only hits upwards if that's in proximity of sento it'll put him on cooldown oh i didn't know that that's interesting yeah weird kind and of... it's an ambush right so people will use that to try to i'm not actually not sure if that still works that was absolutely a thing that may have been patched out but there was a point in time yeah if that's not still a thing that uh it definitely worked uh yeah so no kenshi in this last group we saw johnny cage uh asher of course uh poor mikalu mikalu i don't think won a single game <laughs> the whole group it was uh mm -hmm. did play kenshi i think at one point um and then connie Mani, uh loot did point out to me if connie had not lost that one game with kenshi where he Tried to use it would have beat Zombat. He would have beat Zombat. So he's yeah. like, yeah, he lost because of Kenji. <laughs> so that's that was kind of funny. I mean, if that's what, how you want to see it, but yeah, I, I mean, I get it. I also, I also. That's all it. we need is that's all we need is like more evidence to get Kenji mains complaining about that character. Like we we get it. We know what your complaints are and stuff. We don't need you to yeah. remind us every chance you get i don't think there's a way like literally every top aid oh where's all the kenshi i get it they get deal with a lot of shit because people hate sento sento is bullshit right that's the on switch 
where's the balance in between? There's got to be somewhere in between Sento at his strongest and Kenji at his wing weakest, where you can kind of like, you know, sandwich it in the middle or something. I think we're like, I think they need to rework Sento into where maybe he gets access to him more often, but he doesn't last nearly as long, you know, like he does the same kind of a thing, but he, you're not stuck there for like 15 seconds in this big ass block string with 50 fifties all over the place. You know, that's what I don't like. I wouldn't mind like one situation similar to like Quan Chi's portal that's on the screen. It's on the screen for like a little duration and you just kind of have to hold it. I don't mind doing that for like a little bit of time, but Sento's on there for such an ungodly amount of time. It's just not fun. I mean, and that seems to be how they balance cameos for the most part, right? And how they buff them is through cooldowns. Yeah. Right? They cool down faster or slower. And Chameleon's so strong is because she's always available. As a certain someone, a certain YouTuber says, the best... uh uh, the best ability is availability, right? And Chameleon's availability. She's yep. always there, always off cooldown. You see her engaging <laughs> all the time. Yep. Um, and I think if they did something like maybe Sento only lasts for like 200 frames or something, but would allow for like one or two mix-ups kind of a thing, right? But then comes back a little bit faster or is a little bit easier to summon or something like that. You know, I I don't really know how they would balance that, but I think Sento in general just needs to be reworked. I'm not a uh, super big fan of that. That Kenshi is a character is coolest that he's looked in any game, in my opinion, but that gameplay is just not it, fam. Not my opinion. Yeah, I, I think there's a few things like that in, the, in this game, but uh, what group was that? That was group C? That was group D. So from there, we went group on to D. the top eight, which we've kind of bitched about at the start wait, wait here. so so who made it? we said zombat made it out by the the skin of his the skin of his teeth right Just because he barely. had the best most, yeah most okay. games or most round wins or something like that so um so yeah so then we went from there once they settled the losers bracket so then it was sonic fox versus vgy uh there's not really too much of a point in going into this too deep like we were saying at the start i'm seeing like they have the characters here johnny cage johnny cage johnny cage peacemaker peacemaker uh face out with katana peacemaker uh we had baraka shang sung general shao i'm just trying to look at all the different characters that we saw um zondat was really weird in his um a really odd choice to put it all on the line with General Shao against his set. Well, that was top eight, off. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, weird pick, but I mean, I guess it was. I feel like that was the Hell Mary at the very, very end, right? At the very last pick down to have been using Johnny and obviously was believing less and less in it and just, I think, just shot his shot with it. And who knows what could have happened? You know, you. I. I think that Shao is maybe a little bit too popular of a character to be too strong of a pocket pick to like catch people off guard. I think right. that lots of people, especially at a high level, especially if you're playing against like EU people, um, I feel like he's especially popular over there. Um, people have a lot of Shao Khan, not as much matchup experience as Johnny, but there's... I don't think many people are hurting for Shao Khan matchup experience. I feel yeah. like he's a relatively common character. And people like what I'm... I was playing Combat League last season. I felt like I saw as much Shao Kahn as I did, say, Johnny or Lou or something. He was everywhere. Right. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I, I agree with you. I mean, at the end of the day, there is like, there's still a bit of a guest factor for Shao because he does like, when he throws his axe down, he gets the overhead, the lows, the plus on block, blah, blah, blah. But he was also using Kung Lao, right? So he was looking for some. The Schmicks. The schmicks some schmicks sure. plus you know some neutral but I, I felt so bad for him like just watching him try to get some axe projectiles out and just was so suppressed right could could see the poor startup of that thing just getting stuffed over and over again and man definitely seemed, at times <clears throat> definitely seemed lost in that matchup for sure was kind he of frustrated like when he lost right he seemed pretty defeated I'm like fuck. yeah just like <laughs> man uh, shouldn't have done that <laughs> like, yeah well i mean he's just like i'm just gonna say ggs to my opponent and i'm gonna go yeah. Think to myself. I'm gonna go listen to the weekend and or solo. whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, and then like uh, I think you predicted that Nicholas reset the bracket, and then Sonic Fox with a clean sweep after that, three and zero. 
Like when it's yeah, like la- super well, Saiyan last mode. week we thought we were speculating about who we thought would win, not who we wanted to win, right? But what we thought would actually transpire, and that was right. my my stab in the dark, right? Like, I mean, we've seen this arc a, a million times with Sonic. Sonic doesn't lose a single set until grand finals and gets reset and then just wins. Then like really engages, yeah, uh, and. Like they're holding and back goes, and that's something. exactly what happened again using none other than so our grand finals season one is all <laughs> built to this the very tippy top the very last match the last two players grand finals johnny cage chameleon mirror match yeah awesome Awesome. Super, super duper hype. Super exciting after not being exhausted at all of trying to keep up all with this uh, over like three days and stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I, well, I don't even think I need to watch it. I'm just going to see. <laughs> I'm going to check Twitter in 10 minutes and see who won or something. I watched the first round, first two rounds, I think. And then I had a nap and then I came back and I watched like, I think, grand finals. Um, but yeah, it, it's it, not it's not just Mortal Kombat though, right? It's every fighting game. Like tech, oh, at the end sure. of Tekken Seven's life, it was all Kunimitsu and all Fang and stuff, right? And season one of Street Fighter it was all JP and Ken and DJ, right? People just use the strongest characters, and you'll see the mirror matches or the same matchup over and over and over again. We just have the luxury of having an extra little assist character, right? And that also just happens to be the same almost in every every matchup as well but yeah. it literally happens in every fighting game yeah it's, it's not mortal Kombat specific and i mean again i can't fault these players for using them this no is a not taking anything tournament. away from the players at all because it's still mad skill right like i'm not oh, even a, a fraction of a percent of the skill as anybody that's played this weekend yeah it's just how i'm looking at it is from a viewer experience and it was very poor it was not fun or hype to watch outside of maybe cheering for face out who's playing something somewhat a little bit different and also a bit of the underdog story so that, and then once face out was out i'm like i don't really care like <laughs> either any three of these people can take it when i stop paying attention as well it's like just uh, how much can you take it's like that first evo japan when leroy came out in tekken 7 right and their first top eight was like all leroy's or like seven out of the eight players were leroy's because he was just so fucking busted right you know uh and that's it's just it what happens and it's and like and here we are and it's just like on our turf like right now but i'm i'm not i'm more excited about seeing the invasion crossover to the baraka johnny cage than just johnny cage chameleon <laughs> you seen the have you seen the baraka johnny oh, i sent you the picture right the cursed picture of baraka wearing sunglasses and he, they gave him a pompadour <laughs> <laughs> and he's got, i forgot what the name was but it was a johnny a Johnny Baraka mashup, and that was like disturbing. That was like unsettling. Like, why am I looking at? It? Oh, it's... I feel this has like slowly become a segment on here where we just talk about the weird pairings that we've seen in uh, in in invasions. I saw one of the laziest ones. I saw was just Scorp Lao was what it was called. And it was basically just Kung Lao with the scorpion mask. <laughs> it was a. Uh... Oh, really? I was thinking <laughs> yeah. Scorpion with the Kung Lao hat. Hmm, that would have been better. Yeah, I agree. It just, it looked and felt really lazy, um, but it was something that I saw. I saw the bald Asher again. <laughs> just, that is so I did jarring. Too. That is so She's jarring. She's in the new one. She had, she was called Demon Eye. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Demon they Eye. like, I think they're making her an actual thing, you know? Uh, Man, I don't that one in the Baraka one. So Ashra Bald, they I see a lot of the Kano mashup ones. Anybody that's supposed to have hair and does not have hair, that that looks fucked up, right? I saw like a Luke Kang Kano one, right? And it's just like, you know, you've seen so many like bald dudes or like whatever. It just looks so wrong. Like all of these Kano ones look so wrong, and they're just looking for excuses to make these characters bald. <laughs> like why someone there just doesn't has a thing against hair or something or? i mean maybe they just sit and laugh like you know expecting these sorts of reactions and conversations but it is kind of funny like <laughs> you know once you get over the the jarring first impression it is it is i funny saw that... a badass one that was ken Shi and kung lao mashup and it was ken Shi you ken Shi wearing kung lao's hat and stuff you know he like dips his head down he's all Oh yeah, Looked like a like an old western or something almost, right? Like Clint Eastwood with his hat all tilted down. That looked sick. Yeah, that's uh, that was a good one. That's one of the better ones. That's a cool one. Let 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 us know in the comments if you've seen any one that's that are uh, particularly jarring or particularly 
funny or particular at all. Just let us know, because... Or even cool, like cool ones. Yeah, the cool one, like uh, Clint Eastwood, Kung Lao Kenshi. You know, that's... Yeah, not, yeah, that one's cool. <clears throat> not something I would have thought of, but... Um, Barack with the pompadour is something everybody needs to see. <laughs> you need that in your life. I wish I could remember what that was called, because I ran into that, too. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. I think it was like Star Blades or something like that. Yeah. So I guess the final question after all of this is all done is what's next? Are we going to see a season two? Part of the reason I was watching the whole stream through was to see an announcement of something or a trailer for something. I, you know, and they're like, nope, we good. Ed Boon being there with uh, with Tyler, and I was like, okay, or something. Nope, happening. we have this announcement of this new Rick and Morty envisioning anime thing. Here's a sneak preview. <laughs> yeah, here's here's the trailer for the the Rick and Morty anime that. I'm not sure anyone here asked for, but there you go. <laughs> you have it. So Dude, the setup of it was like so weird. It was like, okay. I mean Yeah, they had uh, Tento reading reading the book kind of a thing. And then like I saw like when it first came into it, I'm like, oh we maybe we have an announcement coming. This looks like a little But there were a couple times where they did shit like that and I was just like, Oh something's coming yeah, that it never does on blue balls. WB things or or whatever. Yeah. So it is what it is. Um I to be honest, I'm not expecting a season two of, uh, you're not, I'm not expecting a season. Even two. after Ed Boone's tweet asking about skins that would fund a competitive season. I think that idea is might be left for the next game. I, I'm not confident that they're going to have a second season. The, the, but hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I'm just... But we're still in early access, Dink. The game's not even out. <laughs> I know, right? The official, really, yeah, they'll, they'll pull the whole multiverses thing and be like, okay, September, whatever, our game goes into full mode, you know, thanks for playing the beta. And we're all like, what the fuck? We played, paid 130 bucks for beta? <laughs> what? Mm. It's, it is how it feels sometimes, though, sadly, but... Um, yeah, I'm hoping that we get a little bit more information about what's coming up next, because once Takeda hits, which will be July, that's, that's it. That's the end of the first combat pack. As far as I know, there's been no announcement for a combat pack two. Worst case scenario, worst case scenario is going to be what happened in Mortal Kombat 11, where... Combat Pack 2 is going to come packaged with DLC story expansion or whatever, so it's going to be its own thing. And then as soon as that's established, you're going to see MK1 Ultimate Edition, Gold Edition, whatever it is that they're going to they're gonna call it. That's how you know when they've called it a day. Exactly. I feel like that's how what happened in Injustice 2. That's what happened in MK11. As soon as you see that cover art change and they call the combined thing, they give it its own name, and that's what it's called on the PlayStation Store and all that stuff. We might get one more patch after that. I think they gave us that one last patch um, after that, or like at the same time. Right. And then just nothing. I I don't know about a competitive season, or maybe Warner Brothers isn't interested. And so they're like, well, we'll do it ourselves just through if they could do it through microtransactions without, I mean, who knows what kind of bureaucracy they deal with or whatever. Right. But I wouldn't be surprised to see it go either way. I'd be more surprised to see it not happen. Yeah, if like, I'm being honest, because we're getting a combat pack to for for sure. I don't I don't have any doubts about that. It's just a matter of how long the game's gonna go after that. I don't think they're gonna spread it out nearly as much as they had for season one. I think it'll be like if they do have characters and cameos, it'll be like character with that cameo. They both launch the same time. I don't think they'll drag it out as long as they 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 didn't Maybe. really do that for the next for MK eleven. Like like you said, they had like the the aftermath where they had like the three characters i think in there and then yeah they had a patch for that and then they had the one little hot fix for shivo after she made that girl cry and then that was it for that game so i don't know what they're going to do if they're going to do a combat pack 2 they really really strongly hinted at a story expansion so i really yeah. hope that they do that and kind of finish the story the way that I, they I, wanted yeah, to. I, I, can't, I can't wait for another 50 gigs to be taken up on my PlayStation for something that I'll watch one time and then I can't do anything about <laughs> without <laughs> uninstalling the fucking game, right? Or like whatever else came along with it. You know? I'll, I'll be happy as long as they, as long as they're able to finish the story they wanted to tell because the final chapter of the story was like the whole, actually the last two chapters very much looked like the last season of Game of Thrones, you know, like like we're running out of time, we need to end this thing, just put something together, call it a day. 
And that's not at all what I thought that it was kind of leading up to. Maybe I'm wrong. I wasn't in the writer's room, but it just, that's how it felt from like a fan perspective of that lore. Mm, I don't know. Who I knows? have lots of hot takes about what they did with the story. Well, but... I'm, I'm sure that's a conversation we could make for an hour another day. <laughs> Trust me, between me and you, I bet we, that's, that should be some homework. We go through, we play the story again, and then we talk about it. No, it's too long. That's my point number one. I'm not going to do my homework because I'm not going to sit there for six hours to go through it all again or however long it's going to take. How about, how about I'll stream it and I'll send it to you at two times speed. <laughs> at two times speed. Nah, what a, what a good friend. See? What a good friend. I'm out here. I'm out here. So, um, so, I mean, they better support the game. Like with this, how year one is already shaped out to be. If they only support this game for two or three years or something, you, you can't tell me there, there's no commitment to this game. That's such a, like a short, didn't, won't even have a chance to live before it's not even serviced anymore. I'm putting the cart before the horse. We don't know what's going to happen, but that's true. If they're not in this game for like the long haul, then what are we even doing here? Just putting up with all that just for it to happen and get on the next game. Yeah. If they, I mean, it depends whether they're just like, okay, like we're finally getting to the point where this is a good product we can stand behind. Like, let's go. Or they're like, you know what? This thing is just a shit show from the beginning. Let's just, let's just forget it's not this sustainable not et cetera, sustain et cetera. Yeah. yeah well just i mean that would be a huge shame and a huge huge black Dude, that would franchise. be like such a kick to the nuts to everybody out there yeah i don't i mean if it, this is like just the game that we got like we never found out what the warrior shrine was we never got online practice mode like Dude, that would be the biggest meme. Can you imagine? The last patch lasts everything, right? And online practice mode is still sitting there in the menu grayed out. Or it says coming soon. Coming uh, soon. Uh, uh, <laughs> Not even spelled with, with a K. K soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I'll... I'll there's a I little hope for bit good of things. Let's hope for good things. We're going to hope for good things, and good things are going to happen. So... That's basically it. We're uh, at the end of Final Combat Weekend, and the rest is in NRS's hands. We'll see what, what direction they want to go. Yeah, next thing is Farah, I guess, right? And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to get my hands on uh, on that cameo and kind of see what 150 health it looks like she gives you. That's crazy. But uh, I think Yeah, the, that's the cost of pain and gain, the right? The cost of pain and gain is what we've kind of, kind of attributed. Deduced. So yeah. yeah, we'll see. But that's it for another week, so thanks everyone for listening. I really appreciate you. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like because it really helps me out. And subscribe if you haven't because I make new videos almost every single day. Hashtag Bonehawks, all that stuff, and we'll see all you Bonehawks in the next video. Accept your death.